Do you like making films in Texas? Yeah, I've grown up with a film scene here for over a decade, and it's great. I mean, we it's nice everybody's sort of finally having their successes in yeah. the last couple of years. So it's been pretty special, like growing up with everybody. And, and you're there being now. Part of it. Yeah. yeah, it's really pretty magical. Well, what was the one moment that you remember that you wanted to get into film? What was that defining moment? To make movies. It's you know when I, I went to college at Florida State for writing. I didn't go to film school, but I loved. I grew up on movies. My dad skipped work a lot when I was a kid and took me and my brother to movies over the summer. And I saw everything from like Dune, way too young, <laughs> um, to like Iron Eagle three or two or something. <laughs> and he, my mom and dad would bring home stacks of VHS every weekend, have marathons. So I I love. I've always been like a fanatic of movies, but I never knew how to make them until I got to college at Florida State, and I worked in movie theater there with all the film school kids, and so they roped me in to being like, you want to be a script supervisor? I'm like, I don't know what that means, but I'll show up and do whatever you tell me to, and it was, I think it was that first film that I worked on for the film kids, where I just sat there and I watched like the whole process of like the director working with the actors, and the DP working with the gaffer, and all of these hands like making a story that would come to a screen and that that was a pretty defining moment. Theater. Did you learn how to thread all the old 35 mm? They wouldn't let me be a projector. Oh they do, I know. Projection heads. Yeah, I was I was I worked in the box office and then I I shoveled popcorn. And now you're making movies. And now I'm show. Making movies. That's pretty that's pretty amazing. <laughs> so you went from here all the way to the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> which brings us to Hellion, which was a fantastic film. Thank you. Um, so, how did you come about this project? What turned you on to make this? Sure, I had a, a short film called Hellion that was in, on the festival circuit two years ago, and that was just a nugget of a story that my Uncle Frank told about how he and his two brothers, who were hell-raising boys that fired in my grandfather's Jeep in sort of the aftermath of when my grandfather came home, and that was a six-minute short, never in a million years expected to make a feature out of it. But after we shot the short, summer of 2011, I just I love the world so much, I love these characters so much, and I just wanted to hang out with them for much longer and figure out what made them tick. And so someone on set said, I think this world lives in Port Arthur, Texas. And I'd never been to Southeast Texas the whole time I lived in that state. Port Arthur. My and grandfather now, had a restaurant there. Oh, really? Yeah, in Port Arthur, Texas. It's such a, that whole, so, well, when someone mentioned that, Kelly, my producer, was like, oh, I actually grew up in Port Neches, which is right next to yeah. Port Arthur, so he started taking me down for these long weekends where I would just kind of immerse myself by literally sitting in Cajun restaurants or barber shops, and just, like, I had, like, a notebook filled with, like, what people were talking about and their stories, and, um, and spent many, many field trips down there kind of figuring out the expansion of that story and that father struggling with his boys and really it was the place that inspired me and inspired making it into a feature. Yeah, how, how did the, did you always have these act, certain actors in mind for these roles or did they just audition and you're just like, excellent? Yeah, no, the only person I knew for sure that I would carry from the short to the feature was uh, Johnny Mars, who plays the father in the short, and knew that he would be in the feature in some form or fashion. Uh -huh. And so I specifically wrote a, a part for him. Um, but with like the boys, it was a massive scout across the state of and Texas. They were excellent. I love those. They were Man. so good. It was I like so natural and organic that I really felt like, while I didn't do like the dirt bike stuff, mm -hmm. but like I got into trouble, you know, I had fun, and yeah. you captured that. Really well. Thank you. Well, it was, uh, you know, half the battle is casting and finding those kids. And we scouted small towns, motocross races, like anywhere we could, you know, turn over a stone and find yeah. some little gem. And uh, and then we, we did our traditional New York, LA scout. We saw all of these kids who had been in huge movies. But when it came down to it, it was like my real, honest, authentic kids came from Texas. And then Aaron and Juliet. Aaron I'd seen in Smashed, which I loved, yeah. and loved his performance, and then went through Breaking Bad and um, was excited for him to play a role he'd never played before. Yeah, he... So we went out to him, and I, I flew up to Macon, Georgia, and hung out with him for a little bit. And after we kind of wrapped up our meeting, 
We were standing in the street in desolate downtown Macon, Georgia, and it's <laughs> like, let's make this movie. And I'm like, all right. Awesome, awesome. The, with, seems like you filmed during the summer? Yeah. It's during the summer with all the kids, were there any pranks or the kids get along, have fights like normal kids do? Or is yeah. there, was there time for that? Yeah, so every, <laughs> so because we were on location, literally yeah. like the entire cast and crew stayed in this one hotel, like everybody stayed in this one hotel. And so every afternoon there was like, they were all in the pool or a little Deke who plays West was skate, he's like a huge skateboarder, was skating around the entire complex. But yeah, they hung out. We would go get Frosties every day because it was hot and it was summer. <laughs> Dip the French um, fries in there. <laughs> yeah, no, but they, they became fast friends. Excellent. And they were all, you know, they all have a little bit of their character in them in some weird way. But yeah, they're, it's fun because they'll, they have this bond that they'll have for the rest of their yeah, lives. Yeah, they'll always be there. It's so cool. It's like that Stand By Me. Yeah. Uh, walk me through how you shot the, the motocross or dirt bike scene as well as the real tense scene where they tie up uh, oh, Juliet yeah. Lewis. Walk me through that. Like, how did yeah. you set up the cameras? How did, did you get the, everybody to be on cue on that? Well, the motocross was hard because we couldn't stage a race. Okay. So we had a, a track called Cowboy Badlands uh -huh. down in Beaumont, and they set up uh, practice days. So there were riders that just came out for regular practice days. And so um, we had we kind of had to stage our people a little bit around that mm -hmm. and then kind of set up the opening where they're all about to take off, but it was hard. I would say the motocross was probably one of the hardest scenes to, because I didn't have control over it and yeah. I couldn't um, completely control the entire environment. But, um, so the editing was the best part that. Was the best, that. Was that the most difficult scene to it shoot? It was. Yeah. It was the most difficult to scene to shoot and edit because you had to like kind of figure out how... It was exterior, it was okay, yeah. Yeah, and then the other, the, the scene um, with Juliet, that was, that was the longest day I had with the boys. And we had, we broke the scene up into chunks and, you know, we did overheads, we did shot lists, all of it. And you just start out with the most intense was it its, was it somber mood on set like for that yeah whole thing? yeah and it's cool because the kid Dalton who plays Lance who yeah. kind of owns that scene um, he had never acted before and he knew like this was his shining moment and this was when he like really uh, owned the screen and so when the other boys would be like goofing off or anything like Dalton would be the one to like get them in line and be like we gotta take this seriously you guys because this this has to either hit or it's gonna kind of ruin things. Um, but yeah, it was it was a challenging scene because you have the guns. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very yeah. It's it had to be a hard scene to shoot. I it, was, it was very hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Uh, so you you mentioned watching movies on VHS growing yeah. up. I know. I aged like, myself. <laughs> no, I I watch VHS. I'm I'm in my thirties. So, yeah. I grew up with that. And I had to switch over. Um, but what are some of your favorite scenes from movies that have always stuck with you oh, that uh, are with you that you think about that, like, I want that, or, you know, been yeah, here? That's a good question. Probably none of them have to do with the movies that I'm making outside of, like, Stand By Me. I, like, yeah, Stand By Me, the coming-of-age stuff is just... million times. Stand yeah. By Me, John Hughes, like, my husband and I got married in a movie theater, and we awesome. played as our vows, like, scenes yeah. for each other. And so some of the scenes was, 16 Candles was one of my, like, I owned on VHS, uh -huh. I still own on DVD, but the scene where she's walking out of the church and Jake Ryan is standing there yeah. on his porch, she's like, <laughs> she's like, me? He's like, yeah, you. Like, I played that at my wedding, and that's something that is ingrained in my yeah. head as, like, what romance is. That's funny. I, I played the Goonies theme, the fertility chase at my wedding when I yeah, walked yeah. down. Oh, really? Yeah. The Goonies is another one yeah. that I've watched a bazillion times. Yeah. It's just... Like, all of those those movies um I didn't really get into art house stuff until college like all of a sudden I was like who's Koslowski and red white and blue and exactly, like what, yeah. is, what is all this <laughs> stuff and I'm like oh this is interesting and different from like what my dad brought me up on like all the Caddyshack and Airplane. but in Hellion you have that aspect of that you know like Goonies and Stand By yeah. Me with these adult situations yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah it's so yeah. good I'm glad you're carrying that on um Thank here's you. another uh a fun question. Um, what do you uh, wish you could have witnessed that you were born too late for? Whether it be like a vaudeville performance or like the opening of like King Kong from 1933. Oh, wow, your questions so. are awesome. <laughs> 
one thing, I mean, this is kind of a sad thing, but like I was a huge, I was a huge River Phoenix fan, like obsessively so. Yeah. Um, and I just, growing up, I loved actors from a young age, even not knowing that I would ever be a director and directing actors. And I just thought there was something so special about that guy and that kid. And I, I'd hoped that someday I would be able to work with him. I yeah. realized I wanted to make movies as I get all weird and teary eyed. Yeah. I just, I, there was something about him that was so special. He really was. He was, I, he was a great, a great actor, I, way before his yeah, time. Yeah, totally. And there's one scene that there, I have Jacob, Josh Wiggins, and my my River Phoenix outfit. And oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we talked a little bit before the camera started rolling about you stop going to music, music. Yeah. Rock. What's your most thrilling music experience? Seeing River Phoenix play in a band at Einstein's a Go Go when I was in like. Grade. My goodness, what yeah, was that like? Yeah, I stood next to him. I know, it's so, <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing, but yeah, he, he had a band called Alicus Attic with his sister, and I'd heard that they were coming to my ta my hometown in Jacksonville, Florida, to this alternative dance uh, or rock club that I used to go to as a kid, and um, it was it was so, it was just like, oh my god. I stood <laughs> next to him at the bar when I was getting a glass of water, because I was like 14 or 15, and and then after that, Indiana Jones part, whatever. Came yeah, the last out. crusade with him. And it was one of those moments where it's like, I just saw him in real life, and now he's on the screen. <laughs> oh my god, this is so crazy! But yeah, that's the one that's ingrained in my brain forever. All right. And it was that's actually a, my first pretty, concert too. That's a pretty thrill. Oh man, I wish I had something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I know. I wish it was like going to see. No, that was that's awesome. I wish I had like a story like that. I don't. Um, what's uh, what? Any future projects you have in the works that you're yeah. like currently writing or what? Sure. Can you I talk had, about? I had a short uh, last year called Black Metal that I'm currently expanding into a feature as well. Okay. So. That's cool. Is there is there um, with it Hollywood or you know companies out there today that are always trying to remake something or? Anything like that? Is there one movie that you would want to remake that you can do it justice, or like yeah. tell a modern day version of it that you've always wanted to? Like I, you, you well, I mean, I love Lord of the Flies, but I don't necessarily want to touch it because mm -hmm. I think the 1963 version of it is untouchable, as well as the book. They they made they remade it in they the 80s, did. right? With and I hear they're trying to remake it again ah, too. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's that's one that I feel I. I I try. I will probably try and do in another way, and I guess I kind of tried to do it a little bit in Hellion, but um, at one point I wanted to do Nancy Drew, and then someone else did it. <laughs> Somebody else did. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I'm still thinking on that one. Well, cool. Well, thanks for talking with me. Yeah, this was great. Yeah, thanks for having me, man.